Are you hungry? Give me something, something good. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Girl Gut. Today we're making Vitello Tonato, and we're making a very special Vitello Tonato. We're making the version from the restaurant called Trippa in Milano. And they do it in a special way, especially the, uh, the tonato part, so the, the sauce part, the tuna sauce. And we're going to make that today and also serve it a bit different. I'm not making the meat the way they do it, I think. I think they do it in like a water bath on really low temperature for like 10 hours. We're not doing that, but I'll show you another way that always works for me. But before we have a look at the ingredients, as always, do me the huge favor. If you're not subscribing yet, hit that subscribe button and check the bell icon so that you get notifications every Tuesday when a new episode is out. Let's have a look. So you can see it's already pretty much done. Um, we have our mayonnaise, we have our tuna mix, we have our veal, we have some demi glace, and we have some capers. I'm not going to show you how I did the demi glace, but if you want to know how to make a demi glace, check this video out because there I go through the whole process of it's basically you make three sauces. You first make a stock, then you make another sauce that I forgot the name of, and then the third one is the demi glace. So it's a whole process, but it's worth it. Um, the meat, I'll show you how I did the meat, because I did the meat yesterday already. So let's have a look at that. Everything you see on the board here is what we need for the vitello part of the vitello tonato. That's not really true, because we need part of it for the tonato as well. But it all gets prepped at the same time. So we have a nice piece of veal. We have some tuna. This is about 900 grams. About, yeah, just a bit below 500 grams of tuna, five fillets of sardines, some capers, a bit of white wine. It doesn't look very white, but that's fine. And some salt. And all of this goes into the pan because we're not making our vitello the way you might know it, where you basically put it in water or in a stock. We're going to fry it. And I'm going to put it in the oven, put the thermometer in it, and get the core temperature to 55 degrees. And to me, that's the perfect way of making vitello. It's a little bit different. I think they actually used to make vitello like that in the old days, or in some parts of Italy. But this is my preferred way of preparing it. So we'll head over to the stove, and we'll do it all there, basically. So we'll start with a frying pan, a bit of oil in it. And we're going to salt our veal on one side first. Our pan is hot. Salt this side as well. And now we just want to sear each side. And while it's standing there on the last edge, we put our tuna in. Anchovies and capers. We just want a little bit of color on the tuna, just to get some of that kind of frying aroma into it. Now we can put the meat on top. Last but not least, the wine. Now we're going to reduce the wine away again. We just want the taste of the wine. So we're almost to the point where the wine has reduced away. We'll stick our thermometer into the middle. And then we'll put the whole frying pan in the oven at 160 degrees Celsius. Almost all our liquid is gone. We'll put it in the oven now and wait until it reaches a core of 55 degrees Celsius. And then we'll have a look at what we do next. So it's ready, it just needs to cool now. So we'll let it cool. Let the meat cool on top because it will still give some juice out and that's great for the tonato sauce afterwards. So I'll see you probably in an hour when this has cooled down. So as you can see, I put a cooling rack to get it away from the residual heat. 
so it'll have it cool a bit quicker. But now it's cold. Now we'll put it in our container. And this goes into the fridge. It's going to cool it down overnight, but uh, you don't need to do it overnight. Just make sure that it's cold. And for the rest, we'll get this. And this now has an amazing taste. And basically, the anchovies we put in has disintegrated and mixed up nicely with the tuna and the capers. And obviously, the wine has given it a bit of acidity as well. So this goes into the fridge as well, and tomorrow we'll mix it with the mayonnaise. And we're basically ready for our vitello tonato. It's a very simple way, and I think it gets a better taste, and you can control the core temperature a bit better. Let's also have a quick look how we made the mayonnaise. I just thought I'll show you quickly how we make the mayonnaise for this. So there's three egg yolks, one whole egg, three teaspoons of mustard, two teaspoons of vinegar, two teaspoons of lemon juice, a good pinch of salt, and then a neutral oil, in my case, grapeseed oil. We'll start by mixing this up. Now we can start adding slowly at the beginning. And that's when, once you've got into where you can see that it's kind of keeping together, the emulsion, you can add a bit quicker. There we are at a good consistency. And our meat is done. So let's get rid of this, put it in the fridge. Obviously, we're going to make it tomorrow. In a couple of seconds, it will be tomorrow. Now, most of you know how to make a mayonnaise, but um, I thought I'd show it anyways. The first thing we need to do is to make our tonato sauce. That's just mixing the tuna, anchovies and capers that we did yesterday and, and a bit of wine with the mayonnaise. I will put this to the side. This is still qu quite a, kind of jelly because it's been cold. We're just going to warm that up so it becomes liquid again. And the capers are just for decoration. As you can see, I've set up the kitchen machine here. You could do it with a hand mixer as well. Now, the special thing with this tomato sauce is that you put it in a siphon. Siphon? Siphon. Afterwards, so to kind of aerate it. And now we just mix our tuna mix and our mayonnaise. Scrape that off as well, so we get everything in. Get the lid on, and then we'll blitz this, but it's going to be loud, so i see you once it's done. Let's give it a try. I already tasted the mayonnaise, and I tasted the tuna mix, but it's always good to taste the end result as well. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't need anything. It has enough acidity. It has enough salt. We're ready. We'll just put this in to the siphon. And I'm not even going to attempt to film this because it's going to be a mess. But uh, you need to get this into here and I don't have a funnel that can do it so I'm going to have to do it by hand. So I'll see you once we've done that. So managed to get most of it where it should be. I've cleaned up a bit, make sure that the edge is nice and clean. I will just put on the head. And we'll charge it later. Oh, might as well charge it now. CO2. And it's charged. Put it in the fridge. Now onto our meat. Obviously the, the ends are not going to be the most beautiful. So let's cut that off. We can eat that later. And now we just slice up slices. That was a bit too thin. Something along these lines. And I'll eat this one. Mm, perfect. So slice up however many you need for the amount of people you're serving. This was about a kilo, and I'm going to serve four people with it. 
I'll see you once you're done slicing. So here's a beautiful slices. This is about a portion, maybe a little bit more. I really cannot recommend this method warmly enough. If you have a meat thermometer, this is the perfect way to make sure that it doesn't get too dry. And it gives a bit of a nice kind of frying flavor to it when you fry it that hard in a pan first. But now let's serve this up. But before we do, as always, if you watched the episode this far, there must have been something you enjoyed about it. So do me the huge favor and hit that thumbs up button. It's just down there, takes you a second, but it's so valuable for me. So please do that. Now, let's serve this up. We have everything we need. Put them in a circle. And I wish I had one of these where this was cut off so it was straight so that it didn't give kind of a, an effect, but I don't, I lost it. So we'll just have to do it with this. Oops. Let me clean this up and we'll start again. Just go around like this. Yeah, I think it's seen its better days. Now for some capers. And for our wonderful demi glass. And there we are, our Vitello Tonato, inspired by Trippa. Although if you Google Trippa and Vitello Tonato, you will see they plate it nicer. They have more hold to the foam. I think I needed to make the mayonnaise probably a bit thicker. But I'm happy with this. Let's give it a try. Mm. Let's get in and get a bit of everything. This is crazy good. That uh, dummy glass makes the whole difference. Mm. Even if you don't have a siphon, and you see, I didn't manage really properly either. Just make the sauce like this. It's gonna taste fantastic. But don't leave the dummy glass out. Mm. Has a hint of a sweetness to it, and it's just packed with real flavor. Real veal flavor. Mm. Whoever invented Vitello Tonato, you should get the Nobel Peace Prize. Mm. This is so good. And it's perfect now for summer, as a starter or even as a main course. I sometimes even make it with some oven potatoes, like really crispy, nice oven potatoes. Also goes great with this. But that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Also, let me know what you thought of the episode. Did you like it? Did you not like it? And so on and so forth. And before we go, if you're not subscribing yet, hit the subscribe button and check the bell icon. But that's it. Take care. Bye-bye.